Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us on the 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. I'm Ken. This is Little Snickle Fritz. Thank you so much for joining us in what is now our 15th live stream presentation from Row Gallery here in beautiful Tlacopaki. I'm going to let Fritz go to work. Now, today's <laughs> artist, Liam Herbert, I have the honor of calling a friend for the last 20 years. And as an artist, I can say that what I find in the quality of his work is it's truly inspired, it's heartfelt, the quality is there, but honestly, it, Liam's work speaks for itself, so which uh, to me is the ultimate compliment for any artist to say is it really speaks for itself. You've got an amazing history behind your work, so if you as an artist is a conduit for all the influence of your life, influences, and it comes out in your work, I don't think there's a better example than you. So Liam, thank you for joining us, and I can't wait for the audience to get to know you and hear your stories. Oh, well thank you, Ken, and I'm very grateful to be in your gallery. Well, we're thankful to I have mean, you. I really am Monica, Ken, yeah. I'm blessed. Well, I can speak for, well let's go back to the, the part about people seeing the quality and how inspired it is. It speaks for itself, and then the thousands of people that own your pieces would say the same thing. It, it doesn't need to be explained, it's there. And I don't know how you do it as a jeweler to work in such a small scale to convey the emotion that you want, which is pretty amazing for me. So I guess that leads us to <laughs> what is, has influenced you along the way. Yeah. And that's what you've got here for us to see. Well, what I wanted to do is, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, my new pendant is called Family. And I would like to take you on a personal journey of how I developed my art over the years and I, I have done some family groupings, which I will show you, but I want to make it a little smaller because family is more important now than it's ever been. With this COVID thing going on and all of the violence in the United States, we need to come back together again with family, and that's what I'm trying to express, and I'll show you that at the end of my little presentation. So my family is from Woodstock, New York, and my grandfather was an artist, so the art history is with me it's in me, and this is a painting of the house in Woodstock, New York, which is an artist colony, was an artist colony, and in 1948, that little window up there was my room. Pretty neat. And who painted this? My grandfather painted the painting probably approximately 1922. It was a couple of acres of land and he had his own studio and it was fabulous. So in 1955, this is my father, and this is Raoul Haig, and Raoul Haig became a pretty famous artist. He was an expression, uh, abstract expressionist. He actually got a grant from the Ford Foundation, which set him on his way. He has pieces in the Smithsonian, he has pieces in the Whitney, he has pieces all around the world. Well, I was here when Dad was with Raoul, this was in 1955, and I wandered into Raoul's studio. He carved wood. By the time I left that room, I created my first sculpture at the age of seven. This is called Torso. I visited Raoul again about 35 years later. This is me with Raoul. We're just shooting the breeze. And I also wanted to mention that my formal training is at the School of Visual Arts in New York City. While I was at the School of Visual Arts, I was also, I was in show business. My father was a property master for Broadway shows. There was a producer called David Merrick. He produced 110 shows. I personally have worked on about 50 Broadway shows. So, while I was at the School of Visual Arts, we had a piece of property in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So this is me in a family grouping. This piece is approximately 17 and a half feet high seven feet wide. This is, an, this is another fan, this is a, a female, a woman. She's a little pregnant. Then there's a child embracing her. That was done in Pennsylvania. Then I was working on a show with Ewell Brenner called The King and I. And there's Mr. Brenner, and there I am right behind him. He was a fascinating man. Oh, by the way, if it wasn't for Mr. Brenner, I wouldn't have met my wife, Sylvia, 
who's a major part of your uh, team. Absolutely. And yeah. she's one of our team members, for sure. Yeah, oh, Sylvia her. just walked in. We love her. So how oh, many shows had you had under your belt when this photo was taken? This photo was taken in 1977, and my first Broadway show was probably when I was about 16 years old, but I wasn't in the union at that point, so mm -hmm. I went into the union in 1968. Yeah. Oh, by the way, while I was on The King and I, it was a broom closet, and that's where I hung out. So I took my little knife, and I whittled this family grouping. In a small version of this. It's, it's, well, actually, this has two people in it, two children, a mother and a father. And then this one here, this is about 10 feet tall. I did that one in 1985. That has a woman with her arms up in the air, and they're embracing. It's kind of hard to make out. And then I did a few bronzes. This is called Family Ties. It's a mother, a father, and two children. All of the arms and legs go through each other because I feel we're all tied together from the past, the present, the future. This sculpture cuts through all race and all religion and brings us back yeah. to the basics of who we are. I Family. think that really describes your work well in, this, in terms of it's about love, being together as, as common people and sharing our experiences together with family, with kids, with parents, and the whole generations that have, have evolved in that in, in your pieces. So it's pretty that's amazing. True. I, that's I, a commonality within your work. That's a theme for sure. Oh, Ken asked me earlier, how did I meet Sylvia through doing yeah. the show The King and I? Yeah. So Mr. Brenner had a bad back and he said to me, Liam, I want to have a special type of flooring, which is cushion, cushioned vinyl linoleum that uh, Hank is advertising on TV. And I'm going, Hank? Henry Fonda. So I ended up finding out where they manufactured the product. And my wife, Sylvia, was actually in charge of the flooring division. And she supplied the king and I with that particular flooring. So because of Yul Brenner's bad back, you met your wife of how many years? Well. Today is July 4th. It'll be 40 years, 40 years today <laughs> that Sylvia and I have been together. Yeah, that's so, cause um, for celebration. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yes, good for you. Now, here I am working on my newer piece, which I will unveil today. And there's a little sketch of it. It's a man, a woman, and two children embracing. So is this actual size here you're drawing of what you wanted to convey? That's pretty close to the actual okay. size. Okay, good. So what oh, I do is I start with a piece of clay, just like with Ken. You started with a piece of clay with that, that big piece you're yeah, doing. Yeah, same exact process, yeah. And then I take, and then I start shaping the clay with my little clay tools. But this is the part that boggles my mind, the scale you have to work in. <laughs> so you have to convey the emotions you're talking about within your work and evoke your inspiration and tell a story all in a scale that size. How do you do that? Gentlemen, excuse I me don't quickly. Know. We, just, we have Patricia Parsons coming in. Just saying good morning, oh, Ken. Patricia Hi. Parsons. Boy, Sylvia, good to see you've so been on my mind. Great to hear from her. Good to hear your voice. No, thank you, Patricia. So what I do is I end up, I receive the idea. And this family concept has been with me a long time. And I decided because Ken, they, they, I love having my work here. And all of my work does speak something. It's very simple forms that have expression. That's what I try to concentrate on. So by the time I'm done with this, it'll be very simple. When will this be done? Do you have any idea? Well, I still have a lot of work to do on it. Yeah. So um, I'll have it done by the next segment we do. How's that sound? Good. And it'll be a pendant. It'll be a pendant. Yeah. I still have to do the veil. But what we do is I can only work so far with these little tools. So I get some wax. I take this little piece here. And I end up making a mold, just like what Jeff Christensen is doing. Yes, yes, correct. I make a little mold. And then I pour the wax in, the hot wax, into the mold. And now we have... So that's the negative? 
And this is the positive. That's the negative, yeah. this is a positive. So you do that because you want to transfer that idea into a harder medium that you can carve better. Correct. Is that, so this is like a jeweler's wax. This is a jeweler's wax. So then I have to take my little finer tools because with the clay, as you hold it in your hand, it gets kind of too hot and I can't sculpt it properly. It so soft. now I'm able to go in here and finish this off even more. I still have a lot of work to do. I have to do the bale. I have to fine tune this a little more. The bale is what holds it on the chain. The bale is what holds it on. Yeah, okay. The, well, just like that. I'll have a special bale for this one. Mm -hmm. And then at some point we take this and we're going to do a lost wax process where it turns into metal. And then we have to refine the metal even more. And then we take a mold of that metal. It's a long process. Yeah. So that's how your pendant for peace. Oh, the pendant for peace. Started. Gentlemen, we have Ruth Gordon. Good morning from hey, Pensacola. Ruth. She says happy fourth to everybody. Yes, happy Great to have to you here, Ruth. Ruth. Good Thank morning, you. Ruth. One day. I came up with an idea. This is my prototype for Pendant for Peace. So what happened was I started carving a piece of wax and Sylvia says to me, what are you doing? I said, I don't know. I think I'm gonna take the peace symbol and make it become the Star of David. And then I'm going to add a cross and then I'm going to add the Islamic symbol. So I want to embed the Jews, the Christians, and Islam all into one peace symbol. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we need peace more now than mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. In the name of God, we need peace. Mm -hmm. So I kept developing this concept and then I found a foundry that could make it for me. I had, we had to fine tune it a lot because this is just rough. So this is, this is the first metal reproduction. That's the first metal reproduction. That you then had to refine to make what you're wearing. Correct. We have Kim Corey, you guys, coming hey, in, Kim. our dear friend. Oh, hi, Wishing Kim, both you, you Corey. And Sylvia, uh, happy anniversary. Yes. Oh, thank you. Definitely. <laughs> thank you, Kim. And then what, what, what happened was Ken and Monica loved this idea also. So this is actually one of my best sellers. We have yeah. people from all over the world mm -hmm. that collect these. Mm -hmm. So a lady in Texas said, can you make smaller ones? Yeah. So I made smaller ones. And then someone else said, can you make an earring? I said, yeah. So we do earrings, we do this. And we also have for the guys, we have The money clip. The money clip. Yep. Liam, Good. these are all for sale at the gallery, correct? Uh, or most? These, yes, these are all for sale. And mm -hmm. actually, they're I'm They're all on grateful. our website, yep. Yeah, I'm yep. grateful to well, We're everyone. grateful to have you. And then, oh, Winona wanted me to talk about yin and yang. I mm -hmm. created a piece called yin and yang. This is what the pendant looks like. It's a male and a female together. This particular one has a diamond in it on the gold side, which is the lady. So two hearts and two people in unity. Two hearts and two people in unity. Mm -hmm. So it took me about four months to come up with this concept. So I just want to show you briefly what I've done. Ken and how Liam, I, we have Emily Miller weighing in, just saying right. she loves this Emily pendant. Emily Miller? And Liam, yeah. too. And she loves Liam, too. Oh, thank See, you. That's, that's a great endorsement, Liam. That's how we feel. Way. Yes, thank you. <laughs> great. Every day I do a sketch. So I started developing the concept for Yin and Yang last year. I unveiled it for my one-man show in December, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So on April 14th of last year, this was my first drawing. It's called Yin and Yang. On April 26th, I did another one called Yin and Yang Sunrise. This one was done on June 6th of last year, Yin and Yang Sunrise Embrace. 
I actually love that one. You made it in a cast or something like that, right? I mean, that idea is not well, I have, shelf forever. Well, actually, on the, I have something similar with the star that was on the, uh, the, e the email that you sent oh, people. Oh, yes, yes, okay. Yeah, the, on June 29th, I did one called The Perfect Balance of Yin and Yang. Then on July 7th, I did yin and yang love at full moon. So I, I ended up putting a heart at the bottom. Then on July 7th, I did yin and yang again. But now I'm, now I'm tuning in on what I feel like I need to come up with. And then on August 14th, this is when I came up with the concept for the one that I just showed you. I was flying from Martha's Vineyard I'm descending into Phoenix. Bingo. That's the design. So how long from the design, your final design, to the finished piece do you think it took you? I would assume months. Oh, it takes months. Yes. Yeah, it takes true. months. So let's do a quick overview of the pieces we have on the table here, too, because I want people to see a cross-section, for lack of a better term, of your, your work. Well... We have sculpture for peace. That's a bronze. We also do that in a smaller version, which is here. A lot of people like to wear this one. Then we have, oh, this is that one. This is almost like the yin and yang one. This is a man and a woman together, and it's called When Love Strikes. It's two Kinda people like embracing. Kind strikes, right? Yeah, that's the energy of love. <laughs> Okay. And then we just have yeah. embracing joy, friendship. These are two people embracing. It's also a freestanding sculpture. It's the smallest sculpture I make. And it will actually stand on the counter. This one is called, what is that? Two hearts together forever, honey? Two hearts together forever. And Oh, balance. This is a person's head, but it's out of alignment. And what it means is we all get out of alignment with ourselves. And there's a heart in the center which is in alignment. So it's called balance because by loving yourself, you go more into balance. Well, that's great, Liam. Thank you so much. Well, oh, you're welcome, I didn't exaggerate Ken. when I said that your work is truly inspired from the heart. We see it in your work, and we're just honored to have you so much. So thank you for being here. No, today. You're welcome, and I love you, and I love oh, everyone that you. purchases my So don't art. go away. We have some video to bring you up to date on Simba, the molding of Simba. And now we have... Jeff Christensen that's going to show you what happened this week making a wax in the mold which is the same thing you would do Liam as you know it's a lost wax process so with with that uh, the piece that he's going to be producing from that mold the wax has to go through now an investment process which takes weeks and weeks and weeks while that's happening we're going to take a short break from our live stream this summer we're going to come back to you in September with the actual pouring of the bronze but don't worry, in the meantime, we're going to keep you posted on all the processes that are going to transpire between here and September, so you, you're up to speed. So, let's show that video. This one is the right thickness too, so we got another winner. And now we've got Simba's head.
we want to be careful because this is cold right now we want to be careful we don't break off his ear of course if we do then we just wax weld it back on it just ends up taking more time so anyway it looks like we're gonna successfully pull this guy out I think we've got another winner here. So everybody, we cannot thank you enough from the bottom of our hearts because if you remember, at the beginning of the show, we said we were gonna make lemonade out of lemons and you made that happen. Special guests, all of our friends, Red Rock TV, this would not have happened, Lee and Randy behind the scenes, Shirley, you met Liam, Sylvia, his other half, and Winona Tabor, and Jen. my wife Monica, and Jen, who couldn't be here today, in your honor, here he is. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank so you. much for making Thank lemonade out of lemons. Thank you for yes. us make Cheers. lemonade out of lemons. A toast, yeah. everybody. Cheers. 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 Up, 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 up. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.